Hey Poke friends! I've been seeing a lot of Pokemon memes lately. I've been seeing a lot about the national decks not coming into Galar. I've been seeing a lot of memes about our favorite starter, Sobble Baby Sobble. But I've been seeing this meme about your favorite Pokemon of each type. And today, I'm going to make a video about that. And along with that, I'm going to be talking about the moveset I'll be giving each of my favorite Pokemon type. Before we begin, I would like to talk about a little disclaimer. When I'm giving the Pokemon their moves, I'm also referencing the team moves that they can learn too. And additionally, if I do like a Pokemon that is a baby in their evolution, like stage one versus stage three, I will then evolve them to their third stage and talk about the moves they can learn there. And with that said, let's get started. So first type is grass type. And my favorite grass type Pokemon is Bellsprout. It is such an essential Pokemon that is also an iconic Pokemon. I love seeing Bellsprout from the anime. I love seeing Bellsprout in our Let's Go Eevee games. I love Bellsprout even as a Pokemon for the Heart Gold Nuzlocke I have done. Fingers crossed about getting a Bellsprout. Ooh. Bellsprout hooties. Bellsprout is such an essential Pokemon, and I adore him so well. And the moveset I would be giving Bellsprout that involves into Victory Bell would be Leaf Blade, Sludge Bomb, Poison Jab, and Hyper Beam. Now, we're thinking, why give Victory Bell Hyper Beam? It's a special type move, which I didn't learn until researching the movesets up. But you know what? I realize Victory Bell can only learn really grass and poison moves. It's really a shame. I wish Victory Bell could learn another kind of move, but until then, it is what it is. And I think giving Victory Bell Hyper Beam is unsurprising, but it definitely is useful when it comes to Pokemon that are not resistant or immune to normal type moves. And with that said, let's move to, on to our favorite fire type. For me, my favorite fire type is Cinderquill. I never really was a fire type fan. I'm like, okay, yeah, they're Pokemon, they're fire type, cool, neato. But once I played Heart Gold Nuzlocke and I chose Cinderquill as my starter, I will now forever love Blaze and I'll forever love this little guy. It is my favorite, favorite, favorite journey so far. Like, I've never had much more of a desire with Cinderquill now than I ever have before. And with that said, let's involve Cinderquill into Typhlosion and talk about the four moves I would be giving Typhlosion. So the four movesets, which would be Solar Beam, Burn Up, Earthquake, and Shadow Claw. Why are you giving Typhlosion a solar Beam, it takes two turns, and on the second turn, you could be KO'd with a Water-type move or a Rock-type move. And that is true, but at the same time, I thought about it, and I'm like, let's just have fun with it, you know? So I think it's really cool to just add the Solar Beam in there. And the other thing is Shadow Claw. I think it's very important for Pokemon to not just have the type of move that they're also the type of. I think they need to have a diverse range when it comes to Pokemon type moves. I think it's so cool that Cinderquill and the whole evolution line can learn Shadow Claw. It would be very essential when later going to go up against a ghost type trainer. And now we're going to move on to my third, well the third type which is also my favorite type. So it's the favorite of my favorite, the supreme favorite of all time, Peplop. I love Piplup. Piplup is my favorite starter of all time. It's my favorite water type of all time. I love the little penguin. Ta -da! Cute little Piplup. So we got the tag on it. I got him in um, six flags. Piplup is my favorite, favorite, favorite starter ever. And favorite, favorite, favorite water type ever. But with that obvious obsession for Piplup, we're going to evolve Piplup into my favorite evolution Pokemon ever. Empoleon, keyword is favorite because it's an opinion. I know some people don't like Empoleon, 
And here's the moveset I'll be giving Empoleon. I'll be giving Empoleon Drill Peck, Earthquake, Flash Cannon, and Surf. I think it's so essential, the fact that it's a, it's a bird Pokemon. It's a bird Pokemon. It just can't fly. And it learns a flying move. And I know Empoleon is more of a special attacker, but having Drill Peck in there is really essential when facing a fire type Pokemon like Blaziken lets you don't rain out of surf. You can still use your flying type move Drill Peck to defeat Blaziken and other Pokemon. And because relating to the type of water steel that Empoleon is, having surf is essential and if that works for a uh, double team as well. And having flash cannon is very essential for type and it would be great as a fairy killer. So good job to you Empoleon, you're so amazing, love you. Now time for the normal type Pokemon, which this one is a duel, it's normal fairy, it is Jigglypuff. I love Jigglypuff, I love the whole iconic essence of Jigglypuff. I love the fact that it is round, it tries to sing, it tries to get attention, it gets mad, then it acts out against others. Referencing Jigglypuff, evolving Jigglypuff to Wigglytuff, and here's the movesets. So for Wigglytuff, I'll be giving Brick Break, Shadow Ball, Dazzling Gleam, and Psychic. The fact that it's a normal type, it definitely needs to learn a fighting move just to defend off the type of its own. I think it's very cool on the fact that it knows Shadow Ball, or can learn Shadow Ball. Which is key, especially to defeat ghost types, because ghost types can't use their own move on a normal type. So, that's definitely essential right there. And then using a Psychic move, and then having a, the Fairy type, it just seals it all. Is a, would be a very strong special attacker, and I love that. Now, time for Electric Pet Pokemon. And I think this one is definitely given. It is the now second rated Sheep Pokemon since Wooloo is dominating the whole scene. It is Marie. Well, specifically Ampharos. And for the reasons of this, I'm also going to. Mega Evolve that and say Mega Ampharos. I think it's insane that it's Electric Dragon. Like, it's more of a dragon than Charizard. Like, what is this? But with that said, let's jump into the moves I'll be giving Mega Ampharos. For Mega Ampharos, I'll be giving Dragon Pulse, Signal Beam, Thunderbolt, and Power Gem. I think it is super important about having the diverse kind of move types and learning Signal Beam, a bug type move, is so essential. Even though we're not thinking of like, oh hey, maybe bug types are pretty, you know. They're okay, they're whatever. But the fact that it can learn that bug move is definitely a surprise. It would be definitely good when defeating dark type moves or dark type Pokemon. So having that in there. And then the fact that it references the Mega Evolution type and can learn Dragon Pulse. Insane! And I think overall, Ampharos is definitely a force to reckon with. A force to even fear. And with that said, let's move on to Psychic type. And if you can already tell sorta of what I like, you would know I like Gardevoir. Specifically, Mega Gardevoir. I, when I first was playing Pokemon Sapphire, back when I was, you know, in childhood ages, I'm getting old. I really thought, this is weird. This is a weird Pokemon. Like, get that away from me. Like, gross. Now, I've sort of gathered my wits and I'm like, essential, standard, needed, thank you. And I love Gardevoir. I love the fact that I also got the fairy typing as well. So essential and such a good contender. Now, with that said, Let's go into the type of moves I'll be giving Gallade, or Gardevoir. For Gardevoir, I'll be giving Moonblast, Psychic, Shadow Ball, and Focus Blast. I think the fact that a Psychic Pokemon could also learn a fighting type move is very essential. And with that, it's also a special type move. Now, additionally, Focus Blast is a special move. So definitely having an advantage against normal types is definitely needed. 
And now we're moving over to fighting types. And my favorite fighting type, which, and I have to be honest with you guys, I was like, I want to make sure I know all the fighting type Pokemon. I feel like some of them are very forgettable, but out of all the fighting type Pokemon, I would have to say Pangoro is my favorite. I really like the whole bears. They definitely are giving me the wee bear bear vibes. But this one really takes the cake in the sense of the fighting type bears. The fact that it's fighting dark is unique. I would never expected that coming from the bear clan, if you will. And I do like that double typing. And with that said, let's go into the movesets we'll be giving Pangoro. So for Pangoro, I would be giving Hammer Arm, Crunch, Poison Jab, and Earthquake. I think having Poison Jab is very interesting for Pangoro to have. We're definitely embracing Jigglypuff, we're definitely embracing Alola Ninetales and Gardevoir, and then having a Pokemon, yeah, that knows that's a fighting dark type, but it knows a poison move to do a little sneak attack. Now, time to move on rock type. I really wanted to avoid the pseudo legendaries, but I'm tapping on that pseudo legendary call and I'm doing Tyranitar, specifically Mega Tyranitar. I think Dragonite was definitely robbed of being a Mega Evolution Pokemon, while what Salamance, Metagross. And then Tyranitar get the Mega Evolutions and we're Dragonite. But it's okay. It's all chill. We still have we still have a lot of plans for a Dragonite, hopefully, potentially. Fingers crossed. Dynamax maybe. Here's the movesets I'll be giving Mega Tyranitar. Giving Earthquake, Dragon Claw, Stone Edge, and Crunch. The fact that this pseudo legendary learns Dragon Claw definitely means it needs to go up against. Dragonite, and I do love that. And additionally, we're now experiencing Pokemon where they're treating Dragon types not as a very rare commodity like they did in Gen 1. They're treating it more casually, letting balls of slime being Dragon type, letting like Pokemon that look like they could be from movies being a normal Dragon. Like Dragon type is becoming more casually embraced, and I think having the pseudo legendary having a dragon type move definitely emphasizes the casualness of dragon types. Additionally, I really do like the fact that it's a rock type, but it can learn a ground type move of Earthquake, and then giving it the dark rock type move and keeping all of it really a physical type since Tyranitar is a physical attacker definitely keeps this Pokemon a good contender and gives it a great reason why it's a pseudo legendary. Now, speaking about the Earthquake being a ground type, let's talk about ground type Pokemon, specifically my favorite ground type Pokemon, Golurk. Golurk was introduced in Gen 5, and that, like, this Pokemon definitely makes me believe Gen 5 was a set. Like, we needed Golurk. Here are the movesets for Golurk. I'll be giving Golurk Phantom Force, Earthquake, Focus Blast, and Fly. Like, the fact that Golurk can learn Fly while other Pokemon can't learn Fly is insane. But I do love the fact that it then emphasizes the ancient, ruin type of Pokemon that it is. Now we're going to go into my favorite flying type. And if you've seen a pattern with all these Pokemon so far, I only base off of the Pokemon type I liked based off of if it was only that exclusive type, or if the type was first. Now, for flying, flying types are only they're the second type in the dual typing, except for the famous flying dragon Pokemon that was released in Gen 6. But, fun fact, no matter what type it can become, it still stays part flying, and that's Oricora. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about the Pom Pom style Oricoro. So for Oricoro, I am giving it Fly, U-Turn, Toxic, and Steel Wing. This Pokemon, it's not really meant to just stay in the game. It is meant to be out there, ruffle little feathers, and then come back. 
or to wait it out. So what I would be doing with this Pokemon is giving it Toxic. If I know I can't beat you firsthand, giving you Toxic. After that, I decide if I need to leave by using U-Turn to hit you and then get out, or I then use Fly and letting that 50% chance of uh, moves constantly being hit while Toxic doing its damage. And let's say I can ruffle your feathers a bit because you are a fairy type. I'll be using the steel move Steel Wing and cutting up the fairy Pokemon. And I, that's how I see Oracoro in as the Pokemon that it is. And it is a good flying type in that regard. Now we're moving on to bug type. I'm going to go with one that relates back to childhood, my first game ever, well not first game ever, but my first fondest memories, Sapphire. And fun fact, this Pokemon is also level 100. It is Beautyfly. I love Beautyfly. It is so cute, it is so adorable. Now for movesets, I'm going to be showing you guys the movesets I actually have of the level 100. Beauty fly. And here it is. It's it's pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know why I spent so much time and effort and so many rare candies. If I ever have to battle someone, expect a level 100 beauty fly coming up to you soon. Now this next Pokemon, it is poison type. And for this poison type, this one is definitely an essential one, as you guys have seen in my Heart Gold Nuzlocke gameplay. I actually gave this one a Surf move, really evolving it from a Moonstone Nitto Queen. We get to do what we need to do and Surf. So let's go and Surf. Oh yeah, go Nitto Queen! Woo! It is an essential Pokemon when you don't have a water type Pokemon in the game. So for Nitto Queen, I'll be giving Earthquip. Poison Jab, Super Power, Thunderbolt. Nitto Queen is a Poison Ground type. It has a lot of weaknesses. It really has a lot of weaknesses for a pretty strong Pokemon. I'm like, okay. So I was thinking a lot of the move sets needed to really balance that out. And then at the end, I was also thinking, okay, we need a move to really sweep the water types. Now time to move on to my favorite dark type. And, like I mentioned before, there's a lot of types I do love adore, as you guys can tell with my water obsession. But, dark type is... I shrug to it too. Now, I love this Pokemon for this one reason and one reason only. I have a shiny of it in Pokemon Go. And that is Honkrow. I'm like, oof. Oof, 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 oof. Baby Honk, love you. I would definitely see Honk Crow in Howl's Moving Castle. It's that like sense of whimsical storytelling, and I love this Pokemon. At least for the dark type that it is, looking through all the dark types, it's definitely giving me that definite whimsical anime vibe. And the fact that I now have a shiny of it in Pokemon Go, and potentially can bring that shiny over to Sword and Shield, we'll see how Pokemon Home works, but I'm excited. And with that said, let's go through the moveset I'll be giving Honkro specifically for main console games, not for Pokemon Go moveset. Dark Pulse, Fly, Hyper Beam, and Psychic. You're not gonna guess Honkro having a Hyper Beam! Like, oh, it's just a flying Pokemon and no Fly, I'll probably learn Dark like Payback, and then BAM! You get hit with the Hyper Beam. Oh, yeah. I knew. Having that little offset is pretty key into my strategy of giving Pokemon those type of moves. And additionally, giving Honkrow Psychic? That's pretty cool. The fact that it could also learn a Psychic type move. I like that. Now, time to go into my favorite Ghost type Pokemon. Ghost type, I'm really thinking Drifblim. Drifblim is such a cute Pokemon. I do love hot air balloons too, as you guys can tell with my Pokemon Dash series. I love the fact that they go into hot air balloons. I wish this Pokemon was released with 
Pokemon Dash, since there was already some fourth generation in there, but it's okay. It's all good. And here's the moveset I would be giving Driftblim. Phantom Force, Thunder, Fly, and Explosion. Now, I know you guys are thinking too, what's up with these movesets? I know. I'm weird. This Pokemon has a lot of weaknesses. And additionally, this Pokemon, you know, it might be out in a couple of turns. So I would embrace it dying really quickly with an explosion. Let's go into my favorite ice type. This one I also had in my Sun gameplay when I first played Sun. And that is a Lola Knight. Beautiful. It's so majestic and I love it and I love oh yes. Yes, such a good looking one. For Alola Ninetales, I would give it Dig, Ice Beam, Dazzling Gleam, and Dark Pulse. The fact that this Pokemon can learn Dark Pulse is pretty amazing. The fact that we have this like very dark like opposites now, but we can have this fairy type Pokemon knowing a dark move is insane. And the fact that it knows Dark Pulse, a special type attack, definitely leverages the whole special attacker it is. And the reason why I gave Lola Ninetales Dig is a good ground move. You can't learn Earthquake, but Dig is a good substitution. And then also acts like Fly and then it retreats and hides, which is a good offset since Ice is one of the weakest types in the game and having this ground type of hiding move that's also unexpected it's definitely a leverage for Lumber Nine Kills. Speaking about one of its weaknesses, we're going to be talking about my favorite steel type of Pokemon, which is Lefty. Having this key kind of Pokemon and it also being a fairy type is pretty cute. So with that said, here's the moveset I'll be giving Kalefki. Kalefki will learn Flash Cannon, Dazzling Gleam, Psychic, and Foul Play. Psychic is a pretty good move. It's very underrated, and it's usually given to psychic types. It's definitely a very unpredictable thing to do. And now we're going to move to a Pokemon that we all think iconically with this type. Dragon? Dragonite. I looked through the whole Dragon list, and I was not really impressed with all the new Dragon types lately. Yeah, I do like the fact that we have a Dragon Dark. I do like the fact that we have a pure dragon type and it's a sludge bomb. And I do like the whole embracing of more dark types. But I still have to go with the classics on this one with Dragonite. And now let's talk about the type of moves I'll be giving Dragonite. So for Dragonite, I would be giving it Outrage, Fly, Earthquake, and Thunderbolt. The fact that it learns Earthquake definitely is like unpredictable when it comes to a flying type. And additionally, giving it thunder also has its leverage since it is a flying type and it then will combat water type Pokemon. And now we're going to the last type of Pokemon, which I am now doing the legendary card on this. My only legendary and it's a good reason too. It is Exarnius for fairy type. And the reason why I'm pulling the legendary card in this one is we do have to admit fairy types are the newest types and Dark and Steel was not given to us until like just second generation revamping Magnemite and Magnetron. So with that said, I'm going to go into Xerneas and the fact that it is such a great legendary Pokemon for introducing fairy type Pokemon and the fact that it's a whimsical deer. I still love it. Here's its moveset. For Xerneas, I'm giving Moonblast, Flash Cannon, Close Combat, and Thunderbolt. The fact that a fairy learns a steel move, that is amazing. And I thought it needs to be added in there. And Flash Cannon is a special type move. And for a special type attacker, that's pretty solid. And then Thunderbolt, definitely adding in the water type that I don't really expect and attacking it with the electric type move, definitely. And that is all the Pokemon types, going from grass to fairy and having fire, water, normal, electric, ghost, dark, all of them within 
And thank you guys for listening to my favorite type of Pokemon and the moves I would be giving them. If you did like this episode, give it a like. Please comment if you agree with any Pokemon that I like, if you disagree with any Pokemon, maybe some moves you would give instead. And subscribe if you guys like Pokemon content. And if you guys like Pokemon fan art, I definitely recommend following my Instagram. I do post daily. And until then, here's a playlist of some Pokemon games I've played. Over here, I have Heart Gold, and over here, I have Pokemon Ranger. Till then, see you guys soon.